Welcome back guys. I understand that going through all the tools can be a bit of a hassle, but it's essential for us to cover this mandatory learning path before diving into a real project. Now let's shift our focus to the tools and functionalities on the right hand side. At the top we have the snap grid, a handy tool that enables us to move our model with precision. We can easily set the desired steps by simply clicking on the minus or plus icons. Next up, we have the useful enable snap button. Let me get a cube and I'm gonna to try to draw a ling on it. If the snap feature is disabled, I won't be able to accurately place our curve on the face. However, if I turn on the snap, we can effortlessly align our curve with the face. This functionality is so crucial that you'll want to keep it enabled at all times. On the right side, there's a button that allows us to easily enable or disable the snap feature for different elements. With this button, you can toggle the snap on or off for faces, points, or edges, depending on what you need at the moment. If you want to enable snapping temporarily, just hold down the control key. When you're drawing curves, snapping will be automatically enabled. You can snap to different types of objects such as control vertex, curve, region, edge, and face. You'll know you're snapping to a target when you see a small black dot. Let's dive right into the topic of construction planes. As you can see, we have three icons, the XY plane, the YZ plane, and the XZ plane. You have two options to create a work plane. First, you can press the space bar. This will create a temporary work plane and align the camera view to that plane. At the top, you'll see a new button that allows you to delete the work plane once you're done, or even better, save your custom work plane. Once you saved, it will appear right here, and you can easily access it whenever you want by simply clicking on it. Second, you can press Shift plus Spacebar to create the work plane based on your current selection without aligning the camera view. Both functionalities will be incredibly useful once you get the hang of it. Plasticity not only has a range of impressive features, but it also provides a convenient display that offers valuable information. This display includes the frames per second, FPS, memory storage, and additional details at the bottom, such as the number of selected models, volume, and area. You can easily expand this display by clicking on this button or simply left click on the display to cycle through the various functionalities. Another important thing I'd like to show you is the command palette. You can access it easily by pressing the F key. All you have to do is type the command you're looking for in the input field and then left click on the command to perform it. Alternatively, you can also access the command palette by clicking on the three dots icon. Now let's take a closer look at it. You have the option to right click on any command, which will bring up a drop down menu. From there, you can choose various options such as assigning it to your favorites. If you do that, the command will be placed at the top for easy access. Another option is to click on Assign Shortcut, which is a really cool feature that allows for quick customization and streamlining of our workflow. If you ever want to remove a shortcut, simply right-click on it and choose Remove Shortcut. This will bring it back to its default state. Just wanted to mention that at the top, we have a cool cube with axes. You can simply click on any of those axes to cycle through the various views. The bottom toolbar is where you'll find all the commonly used tools. It's important to note that these tools are case sensitive and can change depending on the type of surface we're working on. Let's take a look at some examples. If you have a cube selected, you'll see a specific set of tools. If you select a face, a different set of tools will appear. And if you choose a point on a curve, you'll have access to yet another set of tools. Throughout this series, we'll explore each of these tools in detail. It wouldn't be wise to try and cover all of them in just one minute. Moving on to the next video, we will delve into the tools found in this toolbar.
I'll provide you with more tangible examples to help you understand better.